Hello and welcome back. In the previous week, we looked at the basics of architecture, software architecture, the how to build uh, software applications, architectural aspects of doing so, uh, we have discussed in the previous week. In this week, we are going to look at the basics of cloud computing. Uh, in this lecture, I will set some context about where cloud computing fits in uh, when we are looking at building software applications. So in the subsequent files, I'll be discussing this context. In order to understand uh, the context of cloud computing in application development, let's start by looking at the big picture of a computer and the big picture about how an application looks like. So most software applications will actually be deployed on some computer and also accessed through some computer. Now, those applications may use one or more of these facilities which a computer has. For example, most applications will end up using some form of storage. They will be accessed through some kind of a peripherals. Maybe you have to interact through some microphone or a keyboard or any other similar peripherals. And of course, processing is almost always involved. And also, they make use of some communication lines in case that application is accessed from a remote machine. Now let's look at what typical applications, software applications look like. If you observe most applications, most software applications will have at least these three major components. For example, in order to interact with the software application, in order to make use of the functionality offered by the application, the application needs to provide some kind of an interaction interface. For example, you may have a graphical user interface built using HTML5 or using some kind of a uh, thick client uh, API such as Java Swing. Similarly, you have to have the business logic implemented in some programming language using some algorithms or workflows, etc. So business logic is essentially what solves the problem that an application is trying to address. Similarly, data storage is almost always involved. An application while performing its business logic might have to persist the information in a, in a storage or it might require querying information from some kind of a persistent data store. So those data storage could be based on some kind of a relational database management system such as MySQL or it would also use some plain operating system file systems. So with this background about how a typical software application looks like, now let's see where cloud computing really fits in. It is not a clever breakthrough in technology first of all. So it's not a technology breakthrough like uh, moving from vacuum tubes based uh, computers to let's say VLSI uh, silicon devices based computers. So it's not in that kind of a uh, category of breakthrough in technology. What we have simply realized is that we have been able to recognize certain architectural abstractions and are delivering those abstractions as services pretty much like what utilities do utilities such as electricity and waters etc. So what are these architectural abstractions that uh, we are talking about? So we are looking at uh, application runtimes, we are looking at uh, infrastructure and software, self-contained software also. Typically when you are building some kind of a software application, you will normally have to use some basic computing infrastructure. You will have to have some kind of a uh, uh, computer on which you will be deploying your application. That's where this right box comes into picture. So you have to use some kind of a basic infrastructure to build and deploy your application. So you will need some storage, you need some compute power or have to have access to some kind of a network. And for building the applications, you might choose some programming language and its associated uh, application runtime such as Python, Java or even MySQL could uh, qualify as an application runtime where the application is written in some kind of a uh, stored procedures form etc whatever MySQL supports. So in that sense you need some kind of a application runtimes. 
in your application you could also make use of some third party software which is self contained which is offered as a service so in that sense if you look at when building any software application you typically need these three forms of major abstractions you need some infrastructure you may need some application run times and you may also depend on some kind of a software now what cloud computing is letting you do is they have basically decoupled all of these three major abstractions and we are looking to find we 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 have decoupled all these three major uh, abstractions and are offering them as individually as services so that you just focus on your application development and uh, and are not bothered much about other concerns which somebody else should be handling but if you are starting from let's say application runtime so somebody who is offering you just the application runtime and that person that uh, vendor is managing all the underneath uh, details of how this runtime is uh, secured isolated and uh, scaled etc uh, taking care of performance and security and what not that is not your worry as application developer that is done by somebody else so in that case you start from slightly a different level you are just focusing on your application which is built using the application platform application runtime that you have subscribed to that you have chosen from a cloud vendor alternatively you could simply use a software which is offered as a service most of you would have experienced or may have used google apps gmail is one such app youtube is yet another or simply google sites similarly wordpress also can qualify as a software as a service when we build any software applications how do these things come into play so let's look at typical interactions that happen in an application cloud computing is actually related to the things on the right side of the picture which i have just highlighted it offers you various options to build and deploy your application or its constituent components like business logic interaction interface and storage etc it gives you options to actually build and deploy each one of those components onto different abstractions different services that a cloud platform might offer so that is what we are going to look at in subsequent lectures when we look at more details about cloud computing so that's pretty much for this a short uh, introductory overview of what to expect we'll see more details in the subsequent lectures thank you